I want to tell a little bit about my mother's family uh, and one of some of the reasons that I have a lot of reservations about unregulated capitalism. My s mother had three siblings, two sisters and a brother. And her elder sister, she, my, my mother was the baby of the family and it's probably an accident. She was 15 years younger than her sister Eleanor. And she, her brother Julian uh, was second child, I believe. And then uh, eight years older than my mother was uh, an aunt Miriam. But the, my uncle Julian ran away from home when he was 15 years old uh, to try and get some money to help support the family. Uh, my grandfather, Bachman, uh, my mother's father, was not a good earner. Uh, he'd been raised by a wealthy doctor uh, in, and his, his father had a, a house in the city, a, a town and a house in the country, and the house in the country was kind of a farm, and he had show horses, and he sent his son, uh, my grandfather, to more or less of a finishing school, and he learned to write poetry and so on, but he didn't learn to be a businessman. Uh, but he, he did uh, train and tend his father's horses. Well, uh, he wasn't a very good earner, and he did buy a house on Girard Street, which is near Columbia Park, uh, which is near uh, Portland University. And uh, it was before the Great Depression of 1929 he actually had the distinction of losing his house to bankruptcy before the economy collapsed. Then so his son could see the economic privation that was going on in the house and decided to do something about it and he ran away to go to sea. Well, uh, his father followed him down to Astoria and managed to intercept him down there. And uh, he had already signed up to be a cabin boy uh, for a ship that was about to sail, but my grandfather uh, talked him, talked the ship uh, captain out of letting him go, and then talked uh, my uncle into coming, coming back home on the promise that if he waited till he was 16, he would let him go. So when he turned 16, he did go, and he uh, became a cabin boy on a ship that was, had a wooden hull uh, and traveled under the, the power of wind. And uh, it's always seemed strange to me, but one, they hauled coal in their hull. Uh, and Julian was my uncle's name and he would write home a lot and I have his letters and he told his parents and his siblings that he thought he was going to die on a recent trip because the, the weather became so rough that the, the ship was more or less uh, turning over, but they did survive it and he did make it to New York. Well, in New York, uh, his parents had urged him to visit some relatives they had there in New York City but he wrote home that he was sorry he hadn't been able to do that because uh, he didn't have clothes that he felt were adequate to be seen uh, traveling in the city, and he didn't have money for the bus. But he did turn 18 uh, about that time, and he was excited. Uh, he was uh, looking forward to be, uh, be given a salary. I think they'd just been feeding him and letting him sleep there uh, 
in the ship. Well, uh, he had an a, a emergency appendectomy there in New York. Uh, they couldn't wait for him to recover very well. And they told him, well, you can either come with us more or less unrecovered, or uh, you can find your way by yourself back to Portland. He opted to stay with the ship. And as they were getting ready to leave the harbor, there was a Spanish ship there that had a, a steel hull and the captain got drunk and went to bed early and didn't uh, make sure that they had what they call the running lights on. And they rammed into the ship bump was on and sunk it. And there was a lawsuit and in the discovery phase, it was found that the, uh, the crew on the Spanish ship had not turned on the running lights. And after they rammed into uh, my uncle's ship, it took them too long, a negligent amount of time to get uh, lifeboats into the water and rescue the, the crew of the sunk ship. Well, they did uh, drag my uncle out of the water alive, but he'd been in the cold water so long, he suffered from hypothermia and they got him, uh, anyway, he, he died of hypothermia uh, promptly after being dumped in the water. And in the subsequent litigation, uh, the big problem for my, grandparents was that the measure of damages in that situation was the amount of money he'd been sending home to support his, his family. And he hadn't started getting money yet because he was just a cabin boy. So here was a young man exposed to uh, the dangers of death. And the law was that if you weren't getting paid anything, uh, your your surviving family couldn't couldn't recover anything, and uh, my mother tells me that her parents were really depending on him becoming prosperous and helping helping them financially, and so it was a horrible loss when he uh, died, and I didn't know this until I read uh, the part about no money if you weren't sending money home. I didn't know about that until I was living with mother in uh, 2007 through 2010. But what a infuriating uh, capitalism, no responsibility for uh, your employees mess that was. Uh, they recovered just enough money to take a little trip down to the Bay Area, uh, and that was it. And they lost their house. And uh, my mother tells about uh, her dad giving her a dollar and telling her to go to the grocery store and buy dinner, the materials for dinner for him and her, because her mother was across the other side of town uh, at Reed College being a cook there and couldn't afford to come home at night, had to stay over there. So they had it pretty tough. Uh, my mother uh, at a very early age started being a maid uh, uh, in wealthy people's homes, a couple of them down in Dunthorpe. Uh, very humble work for almost for very small pay. So that was the name of the game in those days.